Uh, good morning, everyone. I uh, know folks are getting a little bit restless, uh, so I will try to uh, speed through this a little bit quickly, uh, but hopefully um, share a little bit about what we're working on at the White House, particularly around these issues of police-citizen relationships and how we're using open, um, and particularly open data, to move departments um, towards better relationships with, with communities. Um, as I mentioned, I'm here on behalf of the White House along with my colleague Alvin. As a member of the U.S. Digital Service, uh, affectionately referred to as the President's Startup, the White House a team full of engineers, uh, designers, great product and strat operations per, uh, people, um, building products and better digital services uh, for the American people. Um, so I want to share with you a little bit today uh, around a project that I've had the opportunity to work on um, that I actually started during my year as a Presidential Innovation Fellow. Um, and have been a, a afforded the opportunity to work on it with amazing colleagues across the White House, um, including folks like the U.S. Chief Data Scientist D.J. Patel, who was in town this week, and other colleagues who've really started to embrace um, what technology, what data, and what the, what the skills that uh, folks like yourselves can bring to these conversations that are not just technical conversations, but also in the social space. Um, so my time as an innovation fellow actually started in September 2014, almost a month to the day when Michael Brown uh, had been killed in Ferguson, Missouri, right? Um, and that was a real inflection point in, in Ferguson and then the cadence, unfortunately, that fall of other, of other deaths of unarmed black men across the country um, at the hands of law enforcement. And so the conversation, I'm sure you, everyone is familiar with at this point, kind of reached a, uh, a, a fever point uh, during that time, right? Um, as you've, you've heard the president. Um, this is one of the top issues on his agenda um, for the remainder of his time in office. And you've heard him speak about these things. And so one of the things that the White House did was convene what was called the President's Task Force on 21st Century Policing. Um, and it was a group that, that went across the country, listening sessions comprised of law enforcement, uh, activists, um, and, and what they did was try to understand what, does, or what should a modern 21st century police department look like? What should they be doing? How should they be interacting with the community? What types of training should they be having? And one of the things that came out of that, and it was no surprise because we had heard that conversation being elevated nationally around this demand for, for better data about policing, particularly as it, as it pertained to officer-involved shooting data, right? And so the, the, the task force came back with 59 recommendations. Fourteen of those recommendations actually dealt directly with the need uh, for departments to be more transparent around policies, around training, and particularly around data, right? A lot of this conversation is, has been rooted in the anecdotal, right? We, we start these conversations, it just seems almost in a loop, um, every time a new video comes out, right? And the video's going to give us some insight into a particular incident, but we're really having a lot of these conversations pretty blind, right? We don't have the data to understand what does policy look like, and what does policy look like when real people are acting out the policies that have been passed at the local, state, and federal levels. Um, and so what we started to look at was, as a White House, we can't, and we can't compel departments to do anything, right, in terms of uh, collecting data or submitting data or being more transparent, right? But uh, we started to do something, I don't know if you've ever heard uh, USCTO Megan Smith talk about it, um, but she calls this thing uh, scout and scale, right? So if you have an idea, chances is that somebody else around this country has already had a similar idea, and it may not look exactly like yours, but they're doing it um, in a slightly different way somewhere around the country. The benefit that the White House has is that we can kind of look across the country, we can do this scouting, we can see who's already doing this work, right? Um, and so what we saw, um, as we looked around the country, we saw police departments who were trying to actively respond to the concerns and questions of their citizens, um, who were moving forward and doing this work, not waiting for any legislation, not waiting for a clear mandate from some, something or someone high above, right? So we looked in Dallas Police Department, Chief Brown had released 12 years of officer-involved shooting data at a very detailed, uh, disaggregated incident level. We looked at Seattle Police Department, they were struggling with how do we share body cam video, how do we share that metadata, right? And so they had held a hackathon with some of the local civic, civic activists, right? Uh, we looked at Louisville, Kentucky, we looked at Montgomery County, and we saw these departments around the country who were starting to do some of this work. And so, um, and this was a big shift and a big paradigm, and one of the things that we started to think about is how can we possibly accelerate this work? And so uh, we had a convening at the White House in April 2015, just with this notion of what if we could get departments to voluntarily share this data, and what if we could get them to start to speak the language of, of open source and open data, right? Um, 
many times, particularly as you look at the local level in these open data movements, um, depart police departments in particular are either not present or the last to join, right? And so what if we could flip that a little bit and actually have police departments as the one leading this movement, sharing data that was disaggregated, not just officer-involved shootings, but use of force, traffic and pedestrian stops, police complaints, things like that. So we invited folks to the White House, um, as, as DJ Patel there, I think that was about a week into the job for him. Um, and we had kind of a convening and really a workshop session. We were hoping to maybe get 10 departments to sign up. Because um, remember, this wasn't something we had really seen before. You could get departments to share crime data, but it really wasn't a conversation around sharing any other types of data. Um, and so we actually left that convening. Um, that's that right there as a commitment board. Um, and we actually left that convening of the departments that we invited. We left with all 14 signed up, committed, and pledged to release at least three open data sets around police citizen interactions in a way that was machine readable, that was liberating the data from PDFs or, or from behind closed doors and putting it out, right? And what we asked them to commit to was the process, to work towards a process of data release, right? Not so much concern with any given product at a point in time, but how do we start to move the ball forward? How do we put converse, uh, police departments in conversations with their, civic, uh, their, their chief technology officer or the, the chief innovation officer? Um, so we left that day with 14, and we felt like we kind of had something there. Um, and so by the time the president announced this thing, it had a name, it was called the Police Data Initiative. We had 21 departments who were on board um, who had made these commitments, right? And so I want to talk a little bit about kind of the evolution of, uh, so that was May 2015, we're a little over a year in now. What is that, how is that 21 departments, how has that grown, what have been the data releases, and what does the ecosystem look like that's supporting this work? Um, and then close a little bit on how you all can get involved. Um, and so, as I mentioned, um, as of this past summer, we had reached about 50, uh, 56 departments from across the country, um, intentionally trying to recruit departments who were big departments, so in New York Police Department, Philadelphia Police Department, some of your largest in the country, but also some of your smaller departments, right? So like Danville, Virginia, that has a, 7, 000, a population of 7,000, right? Because that work is going to look different depending on what jurisdiction you're at. The resources are going to, that are available will look different. And the needs of the citizens in a particular area will look different, right? And so how do we create a cohort of folks who are doing this work, um, build on what they're doing, their innovations, and hopefully scale to a point where we have, you know, in an ideal world, all 18,000 law enforcement agencies across the country who are being more transparent and are using data, right, not just data releases, but using data as a convener, right, as a, as a pathway to have a conversation such that you and I um, can sit at a table, discuss the data, we can discuss how it was collected, we can discuss what it says, but now we're having a conversation about something that isn't just a, uh, my opinion, your opinion, or how we interpret that video. Um, and so we moved from 50 departments, we're now at 80 jurisdictions um, who have already released well over 150 data sets. Um, and again, these are things anywhere from off voluntarily released from officer-involved shootings all the way to police complaints, uh, police uh, community engagement, community events attended, uh, traffic and pedestrian stops. Um, and these jurisdictions collectively represent over, or cover over 40 million individuals from across the country. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about, like I said, the commitment was, and that we've asked those departments to make that you saw on the map there, release at least and work towards releasing at least three data sets right, in an open, platform, in an open manner. Um, designate someone who's going to be the quarterback inside that agency to move that, to move that work forward. Right? And obviously, we went to the leadership buy-in, not just in the police department side, but on the municipal IT shop and from the mayor's office as well. Um, and so what we've asked those departments to do, and particularly those quarterbacks, was to come into, was to come into what we now have is uh, bi-weekly stand-ups. So in the same way uh, you know, that your teams are doing stand-ups on a daily basis, we ask departments to do stand-ups, to hold each other accountable, to share successes, to share challenges, to start to build best practices. So when Louisville is releasing use of force data, they're able to go to Orlando right, and say, how did you guys do that? How did you deal with that? How did you represent that in the data? Right? Um, and to begin to have this language, right, um, to be able to speak in the way that you and I might speak around data and to start to move them forward to understanding some of these things. And it's actually been a very, um, you know, I wish you, wish you could join these calls. It's been a very empowering experience to hear how even just over this short period of time, how departments are now thinking about and talking about the work that they're doing. Um, and so a lot of that, again, as I said, is, 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 is doing a lot of this convening. Um, but one of the big things that we've been doing that I would like to talk about a little bit is, is building an ecosystem, right? So this, this work doesn't just happen with the departments. A lot of times the departments don't have the resources, the technical knowledge to even begin to do this work. So how do we bring departments into conversations with folks like a Code for America, right? Or some, uh, um, some of the other local civic tech organizations 
who can partner with departments, right? And it doesn't always have to be an adversarial relationship. It could be, you know, come on in, help us out as we're trying to figure out how to do this, right? Um, there's a big role, right, for the private sector and vendors who are selling to departments, right? What is the software that they're selling to departments, right? What are the agreements around the data, data release and data liberation, right? As we move into these trickier conversations around what does data and technology mean for, for crime fighting and for policing, um, transparency is going to be even more important. And how do we line up vendors um, and folks working in that space now such that they're good actors, right, and helping move this conversation forward? Um, and so some of the early successes that we've seen on this, um, just briefly, we've worked with great partners, the Police Foundation, um, who's launched uh, the, what they call the Public Safety Open Data Portal. Um, I think that's, that's the name. You can go to um, policedatainitiative.org. It'll take you here. You can see the departments who are participating. You can see the data sets that are being released. Um, you can take them. You can build tools on top of those um, to start to provide some insight into here. Um, as I mentioned before, a lot of this work, too, is focused on how do we not just use data as, as, as a, a way to be more transparent, but as a way to drive a conversation. Um, New Orleans Police Department, um, who has come out of, of a consent decree, has really been at the forefront of a lot of this work. They were one of the first departments to raise their hands and sign up to do this work. And as you see, the chief here is deeply invested in engaging with the community. Um, and so as they were releasing their data set, they did a, a preview event with a group called Operation Spark, right, that was training youth coders um, to, to understand how to do data analysis, right? And so imagine these students from the Ninth Ward, from cities and parishes in New Orleans, who were hacking for the first time on data about their community with the police chief there at the table, with um, the city CIO, who was from the same neighborhood, at the table with them, right? So again, how do we use data? How do we use this means of transparency as a, as in, you know, not an end-all, be-all, but how do we use it to start to have a conversation, right? Um, down the street, um, uh, code, uh, our colleagues at Code for America, they were some, one of the first uh, kind of nonprofit groups in, from the civic tech space to step up and help out in this, in this realm. Um, it just so happened that they had a group of Code for America fellows who were working in Indianapolis, in the Indianapolis Police Department. There wasn't an open data initiative in the city at the time, but they wanted to, they wanted to start to move the ball forward on some of this work. And so those Code for America fellows spent a year with them, built this tool called Project Comport that they're now putting in uh, several other departments across the country, which they'll then be open sourcing after they um, build out some of the lessons learned for other departments to release. Um, and so what this tool does, it extracts from the department's internal databases around use of force, complaints, um, officer-involved shootings. And while it also, you can grab the raw data, it does some level of visualization, right, to help people kind of contextualize, to help departments to start to understand their internal operations better. Um, and so, and as I said before, a lot of this is, is moving us to a new paradigm where we're seeing departments at the forefront of a lot of this work. And so just to, that, that example of Indianapolis, the police department was actually the catalyst and one of the lead agencies that uh, the city of Indianapolis actually launched their broader open data initiative with. And we started to see that in places like Orlando, Florida, and other places around the country. Um, I just want to leave on, on a little bit. Um, I, I talk to folks a lot about this police data initiative, and po folks always want to know, well, what, what, is, what, is, what is the data saying, right? How, how good is the data, right? Um, and those are all important and valid questions. Um, and I, I just do want to double down a little bit on this notion of how do we use openness, how do we use transparency as a way to move the conversation forward? And I think the biggest contribution that we've seen thus far of PDI, quite frankly, um, is, is the police departments who themselves are starting, like I said, to embrace a lot of this work. This is uh, Police Chief Art Acevedo from Austin, Texas, who, um, I love this quote, you know, he spoke these words at that April convening that you saw. He got up in front of the room of other police uh, chiefs, um, who some were still kind of wavering on like, you know, what data sets are we gonna commit to and you know, what can we really release? Chief Acevedo got up, he said, we're gonna commit to all of it. Everything on that board our department is gonna release because it's not our data, it's the people's data, right? Um, we were a little skeptical that they were actually going to get through all of those data releases, but they, they followed through on that. You could go see, uh, again, at the Police Foundation site. Um, but what that is, is that, it, that was infectious, right? And what we've started to see was the shift, this new paradigm, and, and some of the work that, that means the most to me is when I hear departments who previously, when I said, you know, um, we'd like you to share your data uh, as open data, right? And they come back to me and they said, okay, great, here's this, here's this PDF we just posted our, on our annual report, right? But starting to move that conversation forward. Um, so, my last charge, um, and, and the question I usually get is, is you know, how to get involved. Um, and, and, and I think that some of the easier ways, A, 
Would love for you just to understand a little bit more about what PDI is, what the Police Data Initiative is. If you, you saw the map, you can go there. If you come from a community um, where a department isn't involved, ask them why not, right? And, uh, you know, ask them if they need some help, if there's a pathway uh, for your, your group to be able to get involved. Make them aware of the Police Data Initiative. Um, and so, and one other thing that I do want to point to is I said Code for America has been a great partner um, in a lot of this work. A tool that they've uh, recently started working on that you can go see the active repo um, is still in its very early stages. Um, so I uh, just want to caveat that, but would love some help and love some work on what we're trying to build is a uh, police data initiative census, right? So like they said, that data is being released. But how do we build an easy visualization, an easy way for people to check, see how my department's doing? If they're not there, why not? If they have made a commitment, how's that commitment going, and how can I get involved? And so um, just a couple quick ways to, to get involved. Uh, look forward to chatting with you all, and thank you. Thank you.